The kitchen is in the stern, in the middle the bedrooms and the larder, and in the prow the living room. Though it would seem impossible, an entire family of five members can live on a single boat. They may have very little living space, but the world that surrounds them is in constant change and movement, is open and free. When a child comes into the world, its father throws it into the water to initiate it into this marine environment. At four years old, the child already knows how to maneuver the leper, and by the time they are seven, they know all the fishing techniques. They live in such close contact with the sea that when they are born, they are given names that describe the surroundings at the time of their birth. Here we find names such as bird alighting on a palm tree that has fallen into the water, three black clouds in the sky, or eastern storm with strong winds. Like every day at sunset, the children of Toro Siyaji go to the mosque to receive their Koran classes. The Bajau are Muslims, though they also practice animism and shamanism. Islam arrived in Indonesia at the end of the 18th century, introduced by Muslim traders from India. Nonetheless, they continue to believe in Pangroak Kampo, the spirits that control their world. Any happiness or illness is a reflection of their power. That is why it's important to keep them happy, so they'll protect you when the sea grows furious and will keep the world in balance. The day is coming to an end in the calm waters of the Gulf of Tomini. It is time for the Bajau to take their boats alongside the mangrove swamps where they will be protected. These nomads of the sea, like the immense majority of traditional communities on this earth, are facing immense profound changes. Little by little they are disappearing in silence and with them centuries of wisdom forged and practiced over time. There is a Bajau saying that reads, we conserve only what we love, we love only what we understand, and we understand only what we have been taught. It's been three months since Mayana died, and finally everything is ready for the funeral ceremony. During this time, the body has been preserved, having been injected with a concoction made from special flowers and grasses. On occasions, they preserve the body for up to 20 years, until the family has been able to raise the money needed for the burial. Officially, the funeral cannot begin until the coffin leaves the family home and is placed in a small sanctuary on the Rante, the terrace where the ceremony will take place. Once the coffin has been carried in and placed on the catafalque, it begins its journey through the jungle, preceded by the women closest to the deceased, who hold a long red cloth as a symbol of the road that must be followed in order to reach Puya, heaven.
This short journey to the Rente is also the occasion for the neighbors who have not been invited to the burial to express their condolences to the family of the deceased. Meanwhile, Bato, the carpenter of Kete, is hurrying to complete a sculpture of the deceased Mayana. These figures are called Tao Tao and are a symbol of the Toraja culture. They are life-size and though traditionally they only depicted the gender of the person, now they try to make them resemble the deceased. The Tao Tao are paid for by the entire community in appreciation of the generosity of the deceased and are almost exclusively the privilege of the upper classes. In the rock crevices around the region of Tana Toraya, Dozens of these human figures stare out from their wooden balconies on the cliff face, watching over the spirits. The figures are dressed and decorated with clothes and jewelry which belong to the deceased, and on occasion, the wigs are made from their real hair. It is a relatively recent custom which began in the 19th century, and the type of wood used is indicative of the social position of the dead person. But after so many years of funerals, there remain few rocks and escarpments in which to bury the bodies. And though the aim is that the family should remain united even after death, the lack of space means coffins often have to be placed in bamboo structures in the open air. In time, the wood has rotted, converting these sacred rocks into macabre, sinister places. Children who die before their teeth appear are buried in the trunks of these trees because for the Toraja, they still belong to Mother Nature and as such should remain with her. The soul will travel to heaven up the trunk.